So most of you know by now that they've already gone and arrested Diddy. And let's just say this is only the beginning. This is only the beginning. They've arrested Diddy. They've denied him bail until his hearing. And Hollywood is reeling. You know, basically Diddy is one of the ty- is one of these type of Epstein people. And he knows a lot of people. He knows what they've done. And more people also in Hollywood have been doing what Diddy's been doing. So this is going to kind of have like a domino effect. People fear where they got they went after Diddy. Now they're going after the rest very soon. Watch in this video to fully understand how serious the situation is, why more indictments may follow, and what the long-term outcome of all of this may be. And now let's just go ahead and jump right into the first video. Music mogul to an inmate, Sean Diddy Combs, is denied bail on charges of sex trafficking and racketeering. TMZ has been following this case for months now, and Charles Lottie Bodier is joining us to dive deeper into what is happening. The has now come down against Sean Diddy Combs, and there is absolutely no doubt prosecutors have thrown the book at him. Among other things, he has been charged with racketeering, kidnapping, and sex trafficking. This is all based on a grand jury indictment where prosecutors went to the grand jury uh, over a period of months. Now, there is a long list here. He's charged with prostitution, um, coercion, enticing to engage in prostitution, narcotics offenses, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. The complaint, the indictment, mentions the now notorious freak-off parties, um, calling them, and this is the words uh, from the indictment, elaborate and produce sex performances that Combs arranged, directed, masturbated during, and often electronically recorded. It talks about luring women, Combs luring women into his orbit under the pretense of a romantic relationship and then using force, threats of force, and coercion to cause these victims to engage in extended sex acts with male commercial sex workers. There is more. Um, After these freak-offs, the indictment says that Combs and the victims um, actually received IV fluids to recover from uh, what they call physical exertion and drug use. Uh, As for the kidnapping allegations, unclear what they are, they just reference them, as do arson and uh, several other crimes, but they say they were committed in California. Now, as for drug use, um, the the indictment says there was an intent to distribute narcotics which include cocaine, oxycodone, Xanax, GHB, which is the date rape drug, MDMA, and ketamine. Um, It goes on to say that during the raids of his homes in Beverly Hills in Miami, they found a thousand bottles of baby oil and lubricant, suggesting this was part of the freak-offs. They also found three AR-15s with defaced serial numbers and drum magazines. Um, There is also a clear reference to the Cassie video, the video where Diddy brutalized Cassie at the Century City Hotel. Um, They talk about assaulting a woman by striking, punching, dragging her in March of 2016, clearly Cassie. Just to be very clear regarding Cassie, so her little nasty ass may end up being indicted as well. Cassie was at Diddy's side for the better part of a decade. Let's make that very, very clear. Cassie is not a victim in all of this. Only God knows how deeply involved she was. But as far as we know, she was essentially Diddy's bottom B. She was his lieutenant, all right, his top lieutenant. And she likely was involved in the recruitment of people to come to these freak offs. And even though the video we saw depicted Diddy doing something really bad, we don't know exactly what Cassie was doing on her end. Like, you know, we saw Diddy put hands on this individual, but we don't know how many people Cassie has put her hands on, if you get what I'm saying. This is a birds of a feather flock together, okay? After that whole video went out, evidently, she went back to Diddy. 
Like she went to back to Diddy after he did these things. And this was like may not have even been the first time. I think it was that specific event where like she did leave the hotel, but then she ended up going back. And the hotel staff told her, like, yeah, they were like, listen, you don't have to, you shouldn't go back to him. And she's like, no, no, no. I if I don't go back to him, it's gonna make the situation worse. That's a load of bull crap. That's a total load of bull crap. At the end of the day, Cassie was living large and in charge. She was everything that this girl wanted was paid for for her. Okay. And she was living this extremely immoral life for the better part of a decade with this man. It's only when the money ran out. And from what I can tell, when she left him, she didn't just leave like that. She left with money. She left with money. And when the money ran out and she wanted more money and he wouldn't give it to her, that's when she filed the lawsuit. That's when she put this video out. That's when all of this stuff started to happen. Diddy evidently paid the hotel like $50,000 for the videotape that showed what happened between him and Cassie. However, the thing is, evidently, they also gave Cassie a copy of the tape, and that's the tape that was released. So basically, Cassie is not a good person. My honest belief is that she was continued to live off Diddy, which, you know, his money, well after they broke up. So she got some millions off him at least a couple hundred thousand, but probably some millions. And she was living off that money. The money ran out. She went back to him and said, I want more. He said no. And she started leaking stuff. That's, and I'm just being very, very real. Now we're all out here like acting like, oh, poor Cassie, bro. Guys, Cassie is a very dangerous person. Very, very dangerous person. I'm not stupid. And the, you know the, the you know the FBI all of the, they, they her name is gonna come up over and over and over because it's already coming up. Even people are putting out videos saying like, "What about Cassie's role in all of this?" And then and then you know the sisterhood is immediately like, "How dare you go after her? How dare you say anything about Cassie? She's a victim. Cassie is not a victim. Cassie is a villain. She is a one hundred Cassie Ventura. I'm gonna call her out by name. Cassie fucking Ventura. That woman is deeply involved in 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 everything that Diddy did." Okay, she is the equivalent of Jelaine Maxwell. She needs to be taken into custody. But my guess is that she they'll probably try to use her as a witness against Diddy, which I and honestly, I don't even think she's a she is right up there with him. She's right up there with him. And now you have a lot of these people in Hollywood, a lot of these famous people who are literally in pieces because they're like, okay, law enforcement is coming for me next. But and you know, he was doing, Diddy wasn't the only one doing all this nasty stuff. A lot of people were doing this nasty stuff, but then a lot of people were doing these nasty, these, this nasty stuff with Diddy. All right. They were there out there doing it with Diddy, going to the Diddy parties. Guys, I heard about Diddy parties years ago. I'm not going to lie. I was like, oh my gosh, these Diddy parties seem lit. All right. We all heard, I, I don't know if all of us, but I heard about the Diddy parties. I heard about, there were articles about the Diddy parties. Okay. You know, like Ashton Kutcher, Ash, or however the hell you pronounce his name, evidently him, like he was good. He's like he was like good friends with Diddy. What is Ashton Kutcher hanging around Diddy? What is he doing with Diddy? Oh, we're talking business. Ashton, are you a musician? No, but you don't you don't have to be a musician to um you don't have to be a musician to to, to have friends because he's a Diddy's in the entertainment industry. Were you looking at him for startup capital or working in with business or what 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 were you doing with Diddy, Ashton? Man, we were just friends, all right? Diddy was cool. Listen, listen, oh, listen, Ashton, you're a good boy, Ashton, good boy. The worst you have, the worst thing you ever did was cheat on Demi Moore, all right? You're not really about that, Ashton, okay? Making your little punked videos and, and all the other bullshit, okay? So what the fuck were you doing, hanging around Diddy, playing video games? Like, we already know who the hell people like Ashton Kutcher, Kutcher is. So the moment you see Ashton hanging around someone like Diddy, you immediately know something is wrong. What the fuck were you doing around Diddy? Okay? The diddler. You had some, some nastiness inside of you. That's what it is. You had some nasty dreams, and you wanted to live it out. And you went to Diddy, just like a lot of people went to Jeffrey. You went to Diddy so that you could go live out your nastiness, okay? And you know, and, and what's, what's her name? What's her little ass? Uh, Jesus, let me try to remember her name. Uh, M Mila, M the girl that he's married to from the 70s show. All right, they need to watch her ass too because we don't know what she was. She, she was fucking around with Ash. She's married to Ashton. So yeah, listen to me. All of these motherfuckers, 
men and women, every single they all need to be investigated. All right. Because just like you saw with Cassie, Cassie was a she was the lead up. She was a lieutenant. She was the bottom B in all of this. OK, that girl needs to spend the rest of her life in prison. OK, she needs to spend the rest of her life in prison because she is not what they're playing, what they are portraying her to be. Cassie is a terrible person. And we can all tell because she was involved in it. She was involved. She was making, she was planning arrangements. She was involved in this. And she's going to be in there crying. Oh my gosh, did he made me do it? Bitch, you did it because you wanted money. You did it because you wanted money. No one should be crying for Cassie. They say that um, after the indictments in 2023, Diddy tried to pressure witnesses not to cooperate with authorities. If he is convicted, he faces decades behind bars. His lawyer says that Diddy is not only not guilty, he is innocent. As I speak right now, um, he is about to go into federal court to hear the charges and answer. He is expected to plead not guilty. He has surrendered his passport and it appears he is trying to get bail. So at the time that he went into federal court, to my understanding, he was denied bail. They told him that, you know, he was not going to get bail until his hearing. But I mean, this, this, this is a bad dude. Charles, I mean, t shocking is an understatement when you hear the details of this case. What are your thoughts after hearing the indictment yesterday? Uh, you know, good morning, Brian and Natalie. I got to tell you, um, my thoughts reading the 14 page indictment yesterday were that um, there is going to be there are a lot of people in Hollywood who are probably worried about uh, which Diddy parties they were at and what was going on. Uh, that's not to say that they were necessarily even involved in any of the things uh, that are alleged by the U.S. Attorney's Office. But if you're at that party and it turns out that that's when uh, he set up one of these freak off uh, sex parties or that it was going on uh, in another room and you didn't know about it, there's a good chance that you're going to be called by the U.S. Attorney's Office. It's a nasty situation. And just to give you guys an update, so this is coming out. This is as of September 18, 2024. Sean Diddy Combs will be staying behind bars until his trial for the uh, charges that he's now received. A federal judge in Manhattan ruled today in a short two-hour bail hearing. So they did do the bail hearing Wednesday at the Thurgood Marshall U.S. Courthouse. Judge Andrew Carter rejected the proposed defense pitch of a $50 million bond, a regular drug test, home detention in Miami, no female visitors, and more to free and more to free the much accused bad boy entertainment founder. So they did offer to put up a lot of money, but it's not happening because Judy wants to stay out there and enjoy his life. So arguing once again for the government, as she did on September 17, a assistant U.S. attorney, Emily Johnson, put another shift into most of the defense efforts. In, assess in essence, it came down to the twin blades of the threat of Combs posed to others and his attempts, past and, per and perhaps future, at obstruction of justice. The indisputable evidence makes clear you cannot take the defendant at his word, Johnson declared to the courtroom with Combs seated nearby. Just before today's appearing appeal, just before today's appeal hearing, the U.S. Attorney's Office filed a reply to the to the Johnson's letter this morning. To the defense, okay, filed a reply to the defense's letter this morning to Judge Carter, arguing for the release of Combs, listing off the toxic trinity of dangerous obstruction and risk of flight. The Fed stated. Finally, in finally, it bears nothing noting that within the first 24 hours of the cases unsealing, there are already new concerns about witness interference as well as interference with a fair trial based on the defendant and his counsel's attempt to publicly discredit one of the victims. So, yeah, he's, he's going to stay in in jail until the until the trial starts. And what's very interesting about this is that I don't know when the trial is actually going to start, but it could be a while before the trial actually starts. So this dude would be in jail for a very long time. It's a pride. I will say it's really surprising. I'm not crying for Diddy. I'm not crying for Diddy. They keep his ass in jail. 
all right? Then he'll be in prison where he belongs. No one should be crying for Diddy. Diddy is a monster. Diddy is a 100% monster. That's a really bad dude. He is a really, Diddy is a really, really bad dude. He deserves, and he deserves everything that he's receiving right now. All of it. You know, all of, all of everything he is going through, he, he's earned it. Because that dude is a bad, bad dude. He's a really, really bad dude. You know? Diddy has done a lot of bad in his life. A lot of bad. Y'all, a lot of people went to those Diddy freak-offs. And you have to start also wondering about everyone who was at those freak-offs, if they were even off age. Because that's a whole other situation right right here. Yeah, I don't see I don't see things working out for Diddy. I mean, I see him getting in some hard time. The only thing is that if he starts singing, like that's when things can really change. And that's why like everyone's like, yeah, it's gonna end up like a Jeffrey situation. I don't know. I real I really, really do not know. But it I what I can say is it's not looking good. It's sure as it is sure as hell not looking good. But guys, and it, it this is very we are living in some serious times. This is why you have to really know what you're doing. You have to really you have to really know what you're doing, guys, because this is crazy. So in today's challenging world, knowing how to use government and community resources can make all the difference. That's why I created the Survive and Thrive course. This 12, les this 12 lesson crash course teaches you how to secure cash, money, food, house, housing, healthcare, and more. Imagine having a trusted advisor showing you how to leverage community support to stabilize your finances and grow your wealth. Join me and learn step-by-step -step strategies to maximize available resources and enhance your financial security. Click the link in the description to sign up now. So that's its link there, guys. You can go check that out because it's a very it's very important that you guys know what you're doing. Because we are living in we're living in some truly shocking, just very, very surprising times with everything that's going on. The link to that is in the description of the video. And guys, also just want to remind you, check out the Angry Guy Clubhouse on Substack. Dive into exclusive podcasts, Gen X stories, and more. Plus, get access to our passive income blueprint, exclusive videos, and guides on building wealth and thriving. We uh we also have a chat where you guys can where you can reach me directly. So don't miss out. Click the link in the description to get to subscribe now. And when you do subscribe, you will also get our passive income blueprint and that'll be sent directly to you guys so everything i just mentioned is linked is linked in the description of the video this situation with diddy is only going to continue you know going down more turns you have so many people that are paranoid that are freaking out i mean it's kind of they're freaking out after they went to the freak off because they basically got to live out their wildest dreams and fantasies and they don't understand that there are consequences for that. And Diddy was an evil dude, just like kind of like just like Jeffrey. So a lot, so he likely knows a lot of their secrets, a lot of the nasty stuff they've done. Because he was doing it right there. So they're like, oh well, look at this. This guy's a piece of shit. And I'm a piece of shit too. So I could talk to this guy about all the terrible things I've done. Cause it's not like he can't it's not like uh it's not like he's gonna do anything about it, you know? He's already, you know, I already know he's a bad dude. I mean, come on, come on, come on, freak off. Get freaky. Nah. If you're, and certainly if you're involved, um, you would get a call because they're going to want to know everything you want to know and may even want you to be a witness. I just think, you know, we're just starting to scratch the surface of what this case, uh, who it's, this case is going to touch and involve. And the, uh, and the, the feds have said that this is, remains an open investigation. There could be more charges for Diddy. There could be more charges for other people involved. Um, and usually the way this works is once they find out other people are involved or were witnesses, they bring them in and they sort of lean on them and it's sort of like you're going to cooperate with us or there is a possibility that you could face charges. So uh, this is going to be a, um, a, a slow developing uh, a case here because we're just getting started. I, and I don't see how this trial begins anytime before next year. And there are a lot of wild allegations in those documents that came out yesterday, including 1,000 bottles of baby oil. What surprised you the most about what you read yesterday? Yeah, I mean, that, Brian, was a uh, was definitely an alarming uh, graph of the uh, indictment when you read that, that uh, when they raided, I believe it was the Miami home where they found uh, 1,000 bottles of, and they said that these were items that were used uh, at the free call. I mean, guys, 
it's so crazy. It's 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 so crazy. When you think of like literally, there's if I if you go to Google search, you type in like Cassie. There's a, there's like you know they do it does like um it like you know shows you things people are searching for. One of the things people are searching for is will Cassie be charged with Diddy? Because many people who have critical thinking skills are are saying like they damn well know that Cassie was involved in this. I'm telling y'all, this was a nasty dude though. These were some nasty people. There's some and Diddy's out here taking pictures with Eric Adams. Uh, large numbers, uh, amounts of drugs, they said. Cocaine, ketamine, Molly, uh, GHB, the rape drug. Um, so, you know, they said that the house, according to the feds, that was stocked for these parties that were going on. And then to read uh, their description of how uh, did he, they, as they say, lured women into joining these parties. And they say that he would meet them or lure them, get to know them and lure them in thinking they would think that there was going to be a romantic relationship with him. Uh, and then it would turn out that they would be at these freak offs uh, where they would be forced to have or drugged and forced to have sex with male uh, prostitutes that he was bringing in. And that's one of the counts that he's facing also is the uh, transportation of individuals for a purpose of prostitution. So really alarming allegations uh, laid out in court. Diddy, of course, has pled not guilty to all of it. Uh, and then the real kicker for him at the end of the day was that uh, the judge said you will be held without bail. And that means however long it takes for this trial to begin, he will be uh, in a federal detention facility in Brooklyn and not a very nice one. Um, in fact, a fairly notorious one. So you got to figure it he wants out of there and he wants out as soon as possible. We're in this era right now, Charles, of men with power falling from grace in Hollywood. And when I think about Harvey Weinstein, you know, that was an open secret in Hollywood for a very long time about what, what he was doing um, with victims. It, was this also the case with, with P. Diddy that the people kind of knew this was going on? I will say this. There, there, were, there have always been whispers about um, his power. Uh, and how he wielded that power. Um, but I get, can't say I heard any whispers about these uh, these freak offs. And it's really um, alarming. You know, we were talking about it yesterday. One, these, you know, these parties had a lot of individuals. In fact, the U.S. Attorney's Office says that uh, the parties would sometimes go on for days. So there are a lot of individuals involved. Uh, and yet, th and they say this has been going on for more than 10 years. And yet, we didn't hear about that. So that means that all the people that were involved, according to the feds, were that he managed to keep them all quiet, that nobody would speak about it. And that does sort of speak to um, the kind of power he wielded and, and the fear that people had of him. We we're also talking about the fact that that um, the beating of Cassie, which was captured mm -hmm. on the hotel surveillance video, that was, um, what, seven, six years ago. And as alleged when Combs nobody didn't get his knew about it. Nobody heard about it. Think about all the people that were at the hotel who may have known about it, people who saw the surveillance video and never spoke about it. Uh, and like you said, we're in an era where when things like that happen, people speak out about it. So the fact that no one did uh, and that it only took this really Cassie's lawsuit before any of this started coming out. It does kind of speak to um, the, the power that he wielded and that the fact that nobody wanted to cross him. Just to be very, very clear, again, that Cassie lawsuit was entirely about money. It was about money. And why did Cassie take so long? Oh, she was afraid. She wasn't afraid. She was living off his money for a long time. She has been living. See, that's the thing, guys. It only takes one to bring you down. It only takes one to start a chain to bring you down. And for Diddy, that was Cassie. But Cassie is not a victim. Cassie is a villain. She played a large role in all of this. What happens next in this case? Uh, members of uh, Sean Combs' family have been ordered to give up their passports. He's currently in jail. What do you think happens from here?
Um, well, the, his attorneys, the first thing that's going to happen is today, his attorneys are going back into court. They have appealed the bail ruling. Uh, and like I said, I'm sure he wants out. And that's their first job right now is to get him out. They've offered a $50 million package for bail. Um, that was rejected yesterday, but they're going to take another swing at it today. Uh, and then after that, um, what happens, you know, look, you know, he did surrender his passport to his lawyer. We should say the way his, law, his team put it out originally, they made it sound like he had turned it over to the authorities. He had turned over his passport back in April to his lawyer, as did his children and his mother. And I, the, their point was they wanted to make the case to the court that, look, we're cooperating here. He is not a flight risk. Um, and they feel like they, the U.S. Attorney's Office undermined that by raiding his hotel on Monday night and arresting him when they say he was in New York because he was more than willing to surrender. In fact, the plan was for him to surrender on Tuesday. And then, for some reason, the, uh, the feds decided to arrest him Monday night. Uh, Diddy's attorneys think they did that so that it would look like he wasn't cooperating, and then the judge would uh, deny him bail, which, as it turns out, is what happened. Yeah, so now that does actually rule against that in and of itself would 100% work against the uh, the defense, in my opinion. Diddy's a scumbag, but he also does need to be treated fairly in the case. Again, I know many of you are going to say, angry, how dare you say something like this? Listen to me. You have to be treated fairly. Like, they need to be able to prove their case against Diddy. Do I think this man is horrible? Absolutely. But just because we don't like him, just because we all think he's guilty, does not mean that he does not to get, that he should not get a fair trial and, to, and that he should be treated fairly under the law. So, there, if there was absolutely no reason to arrest him and, you know, to do what they did and, you know, going in and acting like, oh, we need SWAT and all of this bullshit, you know, a judge has to be able to look at it critically and go, yeah, this was obviously something that was orchestrated to make it look, make the situation look even worse. And again, the situation was very, very bad. It honestly, it seems like this was definitely done deliberately to make the situation. Cause if, if, if we had quietly heard that Diddy, you know, an arrest warrant was hit, it was issued for P Diddy and he turned him guys, they knew exactly where he was. They knew exactly where he was. Okay. So, if it was literally a situation where they were afraid that he was going to flee the country, it does not look like he was going to flee the country at all. Okay. They honestly wanted it to be, they wanted to make it a media event. They wanted to make it a spectacle. They wanted to use social media to drive this, just to drive the narrative and make things look even worse. And again, that's one of the biggest problems with social media today, because it's basically trial by media where or trial by social media, where you are guilty until proven innocent. And that does not work for anyone. When you have someone as guilty as Diddy, you know, you need it needs to speak for itself. You know, now we have Cassie basically sitting out here and doing what women have all, what women continuously do in the modern day era of believe all women, where she is the victim when she is an extreme villain in all of this. Extreme villain in all of this. Cassie could have left at any time. Cassie could have went to law enforcement at any time. Cassie could have done what Cassie chose. To do this, Cassie could have worked with the FBI. Okay, why is Cassie just now, you know, getting ready to talk to like the to law enforcement? And that's a total, that's a load of bullshit. You know, they're saying that Diddy's a uh, Diddy's family members have to give up their passports. His sons, for example, why is that's another very very strange thing we're not talking about. But, you know, his sons, his sons and family members have to give up passports. In other words, if for them to have to give up passports, that means that they're also looking at his looking at them and saying, hey, these people were also involved and there more be there. There may be more indictments, as it was pointed out against not only did against, you know, not just Diddy, but also his children and people related to him. Because I'm guaranteed I guarantee you Diddy was allowing his sons were getting in on it. They were all having a good time. Everyone was having a good time. Everyone was, everyone was chilling. Everyone was, you know, partying and using that stuff. Like this is, it's crazy. Diddy was a bad dude, really, really bad dude, guys. And like I said, guys, in today's challenging world, knowing when, knowing how to use government and community resources can make all the difference. That's why I created the Survive and Thrive course. This twelve lesson crash course teaches you how to secure cash 
money, food, housing, healthcare, and more. Imagine having a trusted advisor showing you how to leverage community support to stabilize your finances and grow your wealth. Join me and learn step-by-step strategies to maximize available resources and enha- resources and enhance your financial stability. Click the link in the description to sign up now. You can go and click the link and it's in the description to check that out, guys. But yeah, Diddy is Diddy is I think Diddy is absolutely cooked. I think he is 100% cooked on this one. You know, no, no seasoning needed, but it's it's just going to it's going to it's going to take a bit longer to play out. And as it plays out, it's it's going to be interesting to see who's brought into it. Also, we have a video from the Law and Crime Network. They're basically going to talk, they're basically looking further into the situation. Um, for example, uh, the judge directly called Diddy out for you know putting hands on Cassie in in that video. But again, Cassie is not a victim. Cassie is not a victim. So let's go ahead and jump into that into the Law and Crime Network's video, and I'll link them in the description so that you guys can go check them out directly and give them give them some support. Uh, a $50 million um, bond secured by the property, not only GPS monitoring, not only will he surrender his passport, all that. They say they have brought the head of Sage Intelligence today, and they are proposing that Sage Intelligence personnel, all former law enforcement, will be monitoring Combs' home 24-7 to make sure he doesn't leave. The defense is also proposing a visitor log, and they would give that list to the court, so who would be coming to and from his house. And the defense also says that Combs will not have an access to, will not have access to a cell phone or access to the Internet. If he's let out of jail, is that sufficient, Natalie? I think that that is creative. And I, again, applaud the defense for how hard they're working for their client. Um, I think that what it does do practically is address some of the issues that the court may have about Combs contacting witnesses. However, you have to question, I don't know anything about this company. I'm not casting any aspersions on them, but I don't know what their reputation is within the federal courts for doing things of this nature because that's not the norm. People will be on GPS monitors or they'll be in custody or they'll be released without conditions, but it's not usually some private security firm uh, basically making the person on home detention and house arrest at home. It's a, it's a, that's a little different. And so I don't know what type of quality controls that they have, and that might be the issue for the court. Outside of quality control, they're doing the best they can to address the issue of contact with witnesses, obstruction, and manipulation of evidence. And, so, I mean, essentially what they're saying is all of your concerns that you have, that he's going to reach out to people, that he's going to leave, we can alleviate that. He doesn't need to be in federal lockup. He'll essentially be in lockup in his house. And by the way, Nima, another update. Uh, and by the way, if anybody has questions on YouTube, submit them. Uh, we'll answer them here on air. The defense is also saying that he's responsible. He's not a flight risk. He came to New York in anticipation of the charges. He gave up his passport. They took the passports of five of his family members. We have a letter of intent to sell his airplane. Your thoughts? I agree with Natalie. A for creativity. I thought the defense has done a good job addressing the flight risk. But there is no rich person exception to our federal detention laws or celebrity exception. What they're trying to do is basically put him on home confinement. And that's possible, but that's something pretrial services has to do and has to monitor. So if I'm the judge, and obviously I'm not deciding cases based on what the public perception is, but I have to think to myself, what sort of criticism is this court going to receive if we grant this really extraordinary type of pretrial detention that no other criminal defendant would be afforded the opportunity to do so? I would treat Diddy just like any other criminal defendant or put him in pretrial detention and pretrial services, monitor him, make sure he comes to court. Uh, the marshals will bring him just like everyone else because he's just like any other defendant who's been charged with drug and sex trafficking. So here's the thing. The judge hasn't made a decision yet, but based on the reporting that we're seeing from inside that courthouse, it seems the judge, in my opinion, is going to side with the prosecution once again. Why do I say that? According to this, the judge just asked the defense to get to the point and said, if Combs was aware of the charges in April, why was he contacting witnesses? Again, that seems to be the point that neither Judge uh, Tarnovsky from yesterday or Judge Carter today, and even though, as and Nima, you said it so well before, um, this is a district court. 
Yeah, so it looks like this judge is really looking like it, it. The judge is going to have to appear impartial to the situation. That's one of the serious issues. The judge already is already seeming very, very angry and um, aggressive when it comes to Sean Diddy Combs. So that that is a massive thing to consider. Like this dude, it's not looking good for him. And like I said, after this video came out, after the law, because they were following this earlier today, uh, after this came out, you know, it was revealed that they had, you know, he had his hearing. The judge has denied his hearing, uh, denied him for denied bond, fifty million dollar bond. But they will be heading back to court again, uh, supposedly. Uh, his defense team is basically appealing that ruling from the judge, and they're going to try again to get the judge to to have him released because he's going to be in Brooklyn criminal lockup and Brooklyn criminal lockup is actually a terrible place. It's, it's a horrible place. The conditions there are absolutely terrible. It's one of the worst places you could be held in New York city or maybe even in the world. Don't get me wrong. It's there. There are places that are obviously worse than that, but it's one of the absolute worst. The conditions are disgusting. He is going to be in, I don't know, I know many of you are like, oh, good, I don't give a damn, but it's a, it's a bad place. It's a very, very bad place, and no one would want to step foot in there, especially someone like Diddy going from, you know, living a, a an extravagant life to now living among the worst of the absolute worst. That's a place that could also damage you mentally, psychologically, because of, just because of the, the way it's structured. So they're gonna try. They're gonna try to get him out. Will they? The judge may may made the de, may demand that he stay stay locked up there. Like in a way, it's like they want to start his prison sentence now, because when you're locked up in those places, it's essentially you're in prison. You are in prison. You're incarcerated, and you know the the time that you would spend being locked up will typically count towards whatever time you get in in prison, whatever whatever jail term jail term you get. So it's like a form of starting your prison sentence you know, being, being incarcerated. So it's like, they're like, kind of like, yeah, now we, we have, you were going to incarcerate you and you'll be in there for years. Like, this is it. This is, it's all over for you. The magistrate, magistrate, uh, court, uh, decision de novo, meaning a new from the beginning, fresh. It seems that this judge is also being persuaded, Natalie, that he should not be let out, that the idea of contacting witnesses is what set this off. Uh, and, and that's what's going to get. So, for example, say he had not contacted witnesses and he had been released on some type of pretrial services or a very high bond amount. And then he turned around and did it while he was out on bond, started contacting witnesses that would get his uh, release conditions revoked. Courts really do not like that. They do not like any idea of witness tampering. Another point that hasn't really been brought up from the court that I've heard or anyone else really is if you think that you're going to be indicted any minute now and you're coming to New York in anticipation of indictment because you're so cooperative, why do you have um, uh, pink drugs, ecstasy, 2C, mm. whatever it is, on physically on your person, and uh, firearms with obliterated serial numbers in your home. Why would you have that if you really thought that you were going to be arrested? So I think that all goes against that argument for the defense. I think it was more that he was just narcissistic and didn't think that anything would ever come to him and he would just get to go on doing whatever he wanted. Okay, so that is a good point. If you did think that you were going to be indicted, See, guys, there was more to it. I thought, but they said he was like in a hotel. So that, I don't know. So what, are they saying that he had, he had drugs and drug, drugs and guns when he, when they, at the hotel? That is very strange. That's really, really strange. Like you think, if you think you're going to get indicted, you're not going to have a ton of drugs and guns on you <laughs> with scratch all serial numbers. Yeah, guys, this is crazy shit, y'all. This is crazy, crazy shit. And like I said, a lot of these people in Hollywood, they're scared right now. They're panicking because they're like the ball is about to drop. And they're about to they're about to go down with it. Like they're about to go down with that sinking ship. That's see, that's the problem. And I mentioned that before in the government's letter is this idea. It didn't stop. Right. These allegations, yes, they're from a number of years, a number of years span. But if he has recently been contacting witnesses, if he's in New York and he has narcotics on him, which, again, the allegations were is that he was supplying people with narcotics during these freak off sessions. And then I mentioned this letter from the uh, prosecution that it says since at least in or about January of 2024, 
which, by the way, you know, he probably thought he was under investigation. The raids didn't happen yet, but the lawsuits happened. Uh, when the defendant was unquestionably aware of the criminal investigation, the evidence shows that he engaged in multiple freak-offs, some involving the interstate transportation of individuals to participate, has continued to use narcotics, and has, con has contacted multiple witnesses. So, look, you know, the, the NEMA, they're saying, will take away his ability to do any kind of criminal activity, but it's not like he's sitting alone in an isolated apartment. He has this team, and I think what the prosecution has been saying, even if he personally doesn't have access to a, a firearms or a phone, he can somehow get that message out, right? No question, Jesse. He is running a criminal enterprise, and that's something that the government keeps harping on in their detention memo. And Natalie raised an important point. Let's say, in theory, Diddy were granted pretrial release. He would be subject to the standard conditions, obey all laws, no contact with witnesses. And there's a pretty high profile case where an individual was granted bond, he contacted witnesses, and that bond was revoked. And that was Sam Bankman Freed in the FTX fraud case. So if Diddy had contact with witnesses while he was out, Federal judges routinely revoke bond and remand people into custody if that happens, because that's considered tampering, obstruction of justice, mm -hmm. really goes to the heart of our criminal justice system and affects the integrity. So that's a definite no-no. If you're under indictment, you're under investigation, even if you're going to be sued civilly, every lawyer will tell you, don't destroy evidence, don't contact witnesses. And we know that Diddy had lawyered up and did this anyway, at least allegedly. So I, I'm being fully transparent with everybody who's watching this. I didn't ask you that question because of the update that we just got, but it's almost like the court is listening to this live feed because the judge just asked, under your plan, would he have employees, <laughs> right? Would he have employees? <laughs> and the defense says they handle his finances there in California. Would he be able to leave his residence? The judge asked, no. Uh, the judge also asked, in the security, they could be there in the house? The defense, yes, in shifts. We could put cameras filming 24 hours a day. So at least the judge maybe seems receptive to it, or at least asking questions. Natalie, what do you think? Judge is giving him the full opportunity to be heard and to make his record, right? But um, I think that this is a case of it, it just would not, it would not look good. This is not something that's available to anyone else. And I can't see a reason for why someone should be able to use their wealth to turn their home into a prison. Um, right. And then we would need to trust that the company hired by the defense, paid for by the defense, uh, would then follow through and not be at all influenced by Diddy and their uh, supervision of him within his home. I, I just, I can't see it. It just, it, it seems massively unfair to indigent people who could never afford to do that. So here is a great question that we get, we just got from one of our uh, uh, followers on YouTube. Excellent question. It's from uh, All Hail. The question, Nima, is how did Diddy know who were the witnesses for a sealed grand jury indictment? How was he given the list of the witnesses trying to get him indicted? I, I think you can even extend that. You know, if he's reaching out to people in general, couldn't you say that in and of itself is evidence he knows what he did, right? Uh, oh my gosh, they're charging me with, with what are they even looking into? I'm under investigation. What, 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 did they, what did I do? But the fact that he's allegedly reaching out to people knows means he knows exactly what he did. So how would he know who the government's speaking to? Well, it's yeah, evidence of his guilt. He knows who was present at these free cops, right? He knows who the witnesses were. And you know, uh, let's be clear, grand jury proceedings are supposed to be secret, but these are some of the worst kept secrets out there. You know, you have reporters who sit outside the U.S. Attorney's Office. They see who's coming in and out. Uh, we knew witnesses were testifying before the grand jury because Jesse, you and I, Shanali, we all do a lot of TV. And reporters are very good at their job, and they got this information. So, yes, great question. Um, but to answer in two ways, because of great reporting, and because Diddy knows who is going to be a witness against him, that's why he was able to contact them. Um, I have a question for either of you. I think it's uh, if whoever wants to jump in. So for a racketeering case, right, where you have this criminal enterprise 
and you have all these underlying predicate crimes that he's not actually specifically charged with, like kidnapping or arson or forced labor, does the prosecution nonetheless have to prove that beyond a reasonable doubt? Do they have to prove um, forced labor beyond a reasonable doubt? Do they have to prove kidnapping beyond a reasonable doubt? And some of these are state charges. Or is it, um, is it preponderance of the evidence? I mean, I guess I'm trying to understand what a prosecution of a racketeering case like this would be. Is it just you have to establish that there's a, an enterprise, there's a criminal enterprise, there's a pattern, there was a common scheme? How much of those underlying crimes does the jury have to believe? Um, any, who wants to take it? Anybody want to take it? I, I, I can take it as a former prosecutor. You have to prove every element of the crime beyond a reasonable doubt. And in a RICO conspiracy case, obviously, you have to prove the unlawful agreement. You have to prove uh, the overt acts and furtherance of the conspiracy. Obviously, we know the enterprise. It, it doesn't have to be a formal organization. It's a, defined as a loose association of two or more people. And like you said, Jesse, you have to prove Okay, Nima, I'm, I'm apologize. We lost your audio right there. Um, Natalie, you want to pick it back up? Yeah, Nima's actually absolutely right. You have to prove every single element of every single offense beyond a reasonable doubt. And if the element of the offense is that he kidnapped someone or committed arson by blowing up Kid Cudi's car, for example, uh, they would have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he actually did those things. And it has to be at least two of those acts within the span of 10 years in order for it to uh, be predicate offenses for RICO. Uh, so, you know, Kid Cudi has already come out and said, yes, his car was blown up by Diddy. So I think they'll be able to at least prove that. And we know Cassie has come out and said that Yes, he did sex traffic her. That's what she said he did to her, sex traffic her. Um, and so those two events happening within 10 years of each other inside the statute of limitations, that's how the uh, government would be able to prove their case. Okay, that's important to know because we're trying to understand not only what the charges are, but also what the defenses would be. I have another update for you. Oh my gosh, I wish we had cameras in there because apparently it's getting a little, little heated. The judge is referencing the infamous 2016 hotel video that we mentioned before where Combs is allegedly beating uh, Cassandra Ventura. The video is troubling. He was 40-something years old, the defense. He realized he has a problem with drug addiction and anger. He went into a rehab program for a period of time. They loved each other. The sex and the violence were totally separate, motivated by separate things. The, they were the, close to being intimate. They would bring a third person on. They chose that. And the judge is talking about what does that have to do with him punching her, throwing a vase at her? What's love got to do with that? Cassie was involved in all of this. Like I said, Cassie is not a victim. News in the Sean Diddy Combs uh, case. He's back in federal court today in Manhattan, this time trying to secure bail. The music mogul was denied bail yesterday after his arrest on sex trafficking and other charges. Prosecutors say that the charges stem from years of sexual abuse and threats against women. He has pleaded not guilty to those charges, and he made that plea yesterday. I want to bring in ABC News' Alex Stone, along with ABC News' legal contributor and trial attorney Brian Buckmeyer for more on this. So, again, we're still waiting to hear the judge's decision today. Because, again, his defense team is trying to get him out on this $50 million bond. Uh, and, Alex, it does... Oh, my producer just told me in my ear he has been ordered held again. Okay, so the judge, uh, Judge Andrew Carter, has decided that Sean Diddy Combs will be held again in a federal facility. So let's jump off right there here. Alex, starting with you, uh, we're learning from our Aaron Katursky, who's in that courtroom, that already this judge was pretty skeptical of some of the arguments that the defense team was making on Diddy's behalf. Yeah, and that order just coming down right now, Kana, that, that through the day today, uh, it appeared that the judge uh, was from the beginning skeptical about this, talking about that video that was seen around the world in L.A. of Combs uh, allegedly attacking his then-girlfriend, and the judge saying, what's love got to do with that? As the defense had been saying, that was a relationship that was... Look, it ain't just Pete Diddy that's in trouble with all of this, because he's in a world of trouble. He's in a world of trouble, but that's not what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about Hollywood being in a world of trouble. And if you're being honest, I ain't the only one thinking like that. So are y'all. Sean P. Diddy Combs. That's the subject right now. The topic is serious. It's a federal case against Sean P. Diddy Combs. The bad boy entertainment mogul was arrested overnight 
at a Manhattan hotel and taken into custody by U.S. Homeland Security investigators. The investigators were acting on a sealed indictment filed by the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York. The 14-page indictment, which I have read, which was unsealed today, charges Diddy with sex trafficking and racketeering. The federal government has accused Diddy of directing a vast criminal enterprise that he used to assault and traffic women. Here's a section of the indictment that essentially lays out the broad case against Diddy. He's accused of, quote, creating a criminal enterprise whose members and associates engaged in and attempted to engage in, among other crimes, sex trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice, end quote. The indictment also alleges Diddy used force or threats of force to coerce women to engage with male sex workers. The indictment goes on to say those acts, which were called, quote, freak offs, end quote, sometimes lasted days and were often recorded. Federal prosecutors say various recordings were seized during the raids on Diddy's home in Los Angeles, homes, not one home, homes, but it's in plural, in Los Angeles and Miami earlier this year. The government also alleges participants of the quote unquote freak offs were often given controlled substances like ketamine and ecstasy to keep victims, quote, obedient and compliant, end quote. Combs will appear in federal court today where he's expected to plead not guilty. Federal prosecutors laid out the case against Diddy during a press conference earlier today in New York City, during which prosecutors also said they want bail denied and they want Diddy to remain in jail until his trial. P. Diddy Combs is expected to plead not guilty, and his attorneys say he deserves to be released until the trial date. Diddy's wave of legal troubles was spurred by a bombshell lawsuit filed by ex-girlfriend Cassie Ventura in November. The R&B singer accused the mogul of rape, sex trafficking, and physical abuse. The lawsuit was settled for an undisclosed amount a day after it was brought. He's in a world of trouble, y'all. Now, why would she love this evil man so much? Why would she stand by this evil man for so long? Because she's not a good person, because she is an evil person herself. So many simps are out here like, you don't understand, angry. You don't know what you're talking about. She was, I've, I, 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 there, are women, there are women who will jump into the comments and say, I was, listen to me, you don't understand when you're in a narcissistic, you're in a, you're in a relationship with a narcissistic person and you don't know how they can mess with your head and you don't really know what you're, guys, it's just another plea for, not for, for for not being accountable. Cassie is a beautiful woman and she is using her looks to her advantage. All right. And she is now resonating with other women and of course the Sims. Okay. This woman belongs in prison. She belongs in, in Brooklyn lockup with Diddy. Okay. They are two, they are birds of a feather, flock together. Guys, listen to me. If they're the same same kind of person, it makes perfect sense that he would put hands, all right. They, like, think about it, guys. They damn well maybe what you would call soulmates, okay? Just you're like, well, if it was a, if if she was actually his soulmate, he wouldn't put his hands on her, bro. Oh, and I don't believe in soulmates, but if they if there's such a thing, maybe that's that's who they were, because they are both toxic people. So if it's only natural that they wouldn't be in this situation, this relate this type of relationship, should he have done more? To, you know, if he was like, you know, in his defense, like I'm not saying that like to protect, like, you know, knowing knowing what she knew, is there a lot more he could have done to ensure that she would not be able to use this against him? Obviously, like you have to be very careful with your bottom B. But the thing, the truth is with Cassie. The truth is with Cassie is that she was likely eating off his plate for years and years and years, even after the relationship ended. And he probably said, no more, I'm not giving you any more money. And when she came with the loss, came out with the lawsuit, he settled immediately, realizing that yeah, she can take him down. However, that's something that he should never have. It should never have gotten to that stage, realistically. But again, he probably was not thinking like, oh, she's gonna be, you know, you know, she's. He's probably thinking she was involved in all of this. She was there. She's not a victim. She would know better. But in feminist America. Women basically can get away with a women who commit these crimes who are involved. Like, look at what's happening with, with all of these women who have relationship with people who are not of age, with young, with men who are boys who are not of age. 
they they often end up getting no time in prison. You know, I made a video recently with Roma Army where she was she had like had to turn off her comment section and basically was began, you know, calling out her sims who, you know, she was talking about teachers who are having relationships with their students and so forth and these the sims were like, "Yeah, I just wish when I was growing up I could have had a teacher like that." And she's like, you know, this is disgusting. And these men are sick. And those are her supporters. Those are the people who are giving her money. So you have to understand that, like, just like I said, the manosphere is rife with sims. You know, that's how society is. We still have a lot of sims in society. You could argue that half, that more than half of society is, is, is composed of sims. More than half of society is, is, society is composed of sims. I mean, and you guys know who you are. You sims know who you are. You know who you are. Okay, you're listening to the video right now, all right? Uh, guys, a lot of the people who watch my videos are simps. I know they're simps because they'll come and argue with me in the comments, but then say that I say the same things in every single video, all right? And they don't like what I'm saying, but bro, you're watching every single video. You're watching, you're, you're one of my biggest supporters. You're watching every single video, all right? You're a part of the one-hour gang, okay? And we're about to come up on one hour, but guys, one hour gang, that's what I'm talking about. Because I make my videos now. Now the videos are much longer. Now, you know, because of what YouTube, the way YouTube is designed, YouTube wants all of the videos to be longer. They basically want us to design our videos for people who want to sit down and watch and learn and basically enjoy themselves. They want you to have a good time. So these videos are, so now we have to design our videos to basically be a sit down experience. If you want to continue, and my guess is that they, they, they probably will introduce some feature later on, or the auto resume feature, because like right now it, it sucks where you like you were watching a video and then you go back to it, and it may or may not pick up where it left off previously. So my guess, uh, hopefully, is that they're going to introduce something very soon or eventually that will make that experience much better. Because now they want us to create experiences that take that go on for an hour or two hours, and we're not talking about live streams. Live streaming, is, live streaming is something different because you're interacting with the audience. You're, it's a, it's a, live streaming is a different experience. No, we're talking about long form content, just like you would watch an, a, an episode of Netflix, and you know you're or something on Netflix and an episode of Stranger Things. I know you're like angry. You're not Stranger Things. Yeah, I know. You know, but and a, but here's the thing: there's a lot of people who would rather watch a one hour video of Angry Guy. And watch uh, watch Stranger Things because you know you can sit back, you can relax. A lot of people don't even look at the. A lot of people are not even. They're not even watching the video as much as they're listening to the podcast. So they're just listening to the episode, right? They're listening to the episode. They're enjoying the episode that way while they work, while they have things to do. They're listening in the background. So you have Sims who are like, you know, you have Sims who are literally like, you know, blah 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 blah. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. But it's like, bro, you just admitted that you watch all of my videos. And the point in the video that you're just now complaining about, bro, that was 45 minutes in. Or that's an hour and 15 in. Like, bro, you're part of the one minute. You're you're part of the one hour gang, right? You're part of the one, you're part of the one hour gang. Oh my goodness. So it's like you look at it like that, like this the, the manosphere is rife with sims. And the reason why there are so many sims in the Madosphere is because they have nowhere else to go. They really honestly have nowhere else to go. The defense, that was jealousy from infidelity in both directions. Mr. Combs and this other person, the violence is from that. Judge says, what is your point? Nima, if you're back with us, what do you make of it? All right, I think we're working on Nima. Uh, Natalie, I'll go to you. Jesse, let me jump in here. Um, first of all, I audibly gasped when the judge says, what does love have to do with that? Because when I was reading through uh, the, uh, there was like a, a Twitter thread that was about the hearing yesterday and the defense counsel, I thought this is where the defense counsel made their biggest mistake in the hearing yesterday. And I cannot believe that they repeated it again, which was by victim blaming. Completely unnecessary here when talking about the two factors of dangerousness and flight risk. When it comes to dangerousness, if you want to pull Diddy away from 
what he did in front of that elevator in that hotel room. You say that that was a long time ago. He's worked on himself. He's no longer dangerous. He would never do something like that again, right? Like you cannot hold him in jail because of something he did eight years ago, let's say. But instead he's saying, she was into this, she liked this, and she attacked him first. Nothing on that video justifies anything that the attorney is saying. That was a brutal. Now, something very interesting. She put her hands on him first. Do you guys remember what I said earlier in this video? So I didn't even catch that detail. She put her hands on him first. Did I not tell you birds of a feather flock together? So you don't know who she's done this to herself. All right. Cassie wanted to be intimate with those people. She wanted to be intimate with all of those guys that brought that Diddy brought in. Cassie had an, an unquestionable thirst for this thing, for this type of lifestyle. OK, Cassie chose to do these things. Cassie chose to be with Diddy. Evidently, Cassie put her hands on Diddy as well. All right. So this is, means that they had a volatile relationship. Cassie is not the victim. Guys, think about this logically. What they're arguing here is that it doesn't matter what a woman does. It doesn't matter if a woman puts her hands on a man. It only matters if he puts his hands on her. Like we are all completely, this is so disgusting. We are all completely overlooking the point that, wait, Cassie, she did confirm, or it is confirmed that she, or at least alleged, she put her hands on him. Okay. She was in, and they're saying they were in love. They were in love with the toxic garbage that these people that they were out here doing. These both of these people are bad people. Both of these people belong in prison. Cassie should not be getting a Goldilocks deal or being portrayed as a victim. She is not a victim in any of this. She was the bottom B in all of this. She was one of the masterminds in all of this. She is a Jelaine Maxwell. She is involved. Listen. If they want to find out, like a lot of the people that Diddy was involved with and were and uh, she was at the parties, she was there gathering people. Guys, she was a madame. You don't know how many women and men she brought into this because there's a lot of male victims in this situation. OK. I just don't like what's happening here. I don't like the fact that Cassie is being portrayed as this huge victim when she is not. She is not this huge, huge victim. She is a villain. And by the way, guys, we have crossed the one hour mark. So, guys, if you've been here for one hour, come on, let's let's hear one shot up. One hour gang, one hour gang, one hour gang. Come on, y'all. One hour gang. Put one hour one hour gang in the comments if you're still if you're, if you're still here at the one hour mark. I, I realize it's like a, it's it's a special thing. It's a very very special thing. One hour gang is a very very special thing. So you know we're gonna try. We're gonna, we have to do something. We're gonna, I'm gonna try to figure out something special to do to represent the one hour gang. You know to um, when you get to one hour. You know we'll see if we we can do something special like uh, I don't know like like maybe a bonus like like a, a private like maybe a bonus video. Like I think that's a I think that's something. Hmm. I like that idea. I like the idea of doing a bonus video for you guys, you know, like, or something special where, like, only the one-hour gang, like, if you watch to the end of the video, if you got to this point, if you're a part of the one-hour gang, then, you know, you may or may not get something get something special at this point, you know, something, because, like, you know, that, that, that only the one-hour gang would get access to because only the one-hour gang would know about it, you know? But just for now, guys, like, shout-out to the one-hour gang, you know, I'll try to give you guys special recognition when I when you guys do one hour gang, like try to like at least like give you guys a heart or something, you know, because like it's 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 our little it's our little thing. It's our little thing. All right. One hour gang, one hour gang, one hour gang. All right. And by the way, guys, like I said, you know, everything is going down. America is going to hell. The world around us is going to hell. You need to know how to. Take care of yourself for when everything crashes down. It doesn't matter how much money you have in the bank, guys. Because in today's challenging world, knowing how to use government and community resources can make all the difference. That's why I created the Survive and Thrive course. And this 12-lesson crash course teaches you how to secure cash, money, food, housing, health care, and more. All right? Imagine having a trusted advisor showing you how to leverage community support to stabilize your finances and grow your wealth. Join me and learn step-by-step -step strategies to maximize available resources and enhance your financial stability. 
Okay, it doesn't matter if you're rich, doesn't matter if you're poor, everyone can benefit from this course. Click the link in the description to sign up now, guys. Sign up now, check that out, because it's very, very important. Very, very important that everyone gets on this and starts doing this, guys. But what do you think regarding all of this? Do you agree this is only the beginning? More, more are going to begin falling alongside Diddy. I don't even think that he did this as well as Jeffrey. Like, I think that like, like only an idiot would have drugs and guns, like if they're gonna come, if you know you're gonna you're about to be arrested. So I mean, like, I think he's he was very, very sloppy. And I think there's a like there's like he probably has logs of like all the people that were at some of these freak offs. And Cassie, she's not simply a witness. Ca man, you know what's funny right now? They may be treating Cassie, and this is actually something that the government could be doing. They may be treating Cassie as a witness and as a victim in this situation to gain her assistance. But after they indict Diddy, after they charge Diddy, after they put prison, put Diddy in prison, then they'll go for Cassie afterwards. But for now, they're basically using her as an asset. And they're, they're trying, you know, making it clear that, okay, we're not trying to charge, we're not going to charge you, we're not going to indict you, you're just, you're, you're a victim. They, guys, the government doesn't give a shit about anyone. The government does not care about women. Women think that the state cares about them. The state does not. The state, the women operate as agents of the state so that the state can do its will. And I, I'm telling you right now, if they charge, if they get Diddy charged and, and so forth, they may come for Cassie right afterwards. Like after, and that's after like she, you know, gives like, you know, helps, helps them charge Diddy. Then there's, you know, she, then they're going to say like, well, listen, we're going to charge you, but. We'll work with you if you give us the names of all of these people that were involved. So she, I, my guess with Cassie is that I think she could still end up being charged or maybe end up or getting very little time, but she's going to have to give up people because she has way too much knowledge. She was way too involved and Diddy is not going to, there's no way that they're going to basically let her get off scot-free. Like Cassie is a villain. Cass, y'all heard me. Y'all heard me. And I want to make it resoundingly clear. Cassie Ventura is a motherfucking villain. That girl is a fucking villain. And that it was nothing more than consensual activity that then had deteriorated from there. But prosecutors said that the Combs is a, a danger, clear evidence of dangerousness, a long pattern of abuse, they were saying today. But the defense offered the sun and the moon saying, we will do anything if you allow them to, to post bail, $50 million bail, they would have off-duty police outside his home, control who comes and goes, take away his cell phone, anything that the judge was willing to do. And the word just coming in now, the judge saying, no way, he will remain in jail. He certainly will. And again, uh, sharing reporting from our Aaron Katursky that is in that courtroom. He said that Combs did not appear to react, but that he had his eyes cast downward while he was seated at the defense table when this all came down. And, and so, uh, Brian Buckmeyer, to you, uh, the judge said the defense proposal to this bail pa package was insufficient um, and that the government, on the other side of that, provided sufficient evidence that Combs is a danger to the community and a danger to obstruct justice and intimidate witnesses. And Brian, I find some of that language particularly interesting when you you think about what his defense attorneys were trying to argue and they were essentially trying to paint a picture of what it would look like if he was to be allowed out on bail with security teams monitoring his going comings and goings who would come into the residence and Brian uh, his own defense lawyer used the language what I'm trying to fashion is a situation where any witness intimidation would be virtually impossible I honestly think that the defense is doing too much. I think that they, by them going to these elaborate steps to try to get him out of prison, they're actually just characterizing just how dangerous he actually is. Okay, like if you have to go to all of these steps, if, they, if you have to go to all of this to prevent him from getting out, then that just makes him look more dangerous. That just makes him look more of, like more like as a person that they need to keep locked up, they need to keep behind bars. I'm just being so honest right now. Like, like, I, I, like, I don't think, I think that Diddy, I don't think that Diddy and R. Kelly are even in the same, same stratosphere, okay? Because when it comes to R, when it comes to Kelly, those individuals, they're like, oh, he coerced them into being with them. They were living a lot. These people chose to be with that man, okay? If Kelly should have went to anything for anything to prison, if Kelly should have, if Kelly should have went to prison for anything, it should have been his relationships with, you know, people who were not of age. To, to, it's unbelievable to think that he's in prison now for grown ass women when and he was able to literally get out 
of his indict out of an indictment and charges for his relationship with a person who was underage. And there was a video there, guys. Do you remember the R. Kelly video? He's in the video. You remember what he does in that in that video? Like like Dave Chappelle basically put out a song a, a song making fun of the whole situation. Like pee on you, drip drip drip, pee on you. Do you remember that? Oh my gosh. I'm telling y'all, we're living in a class. I said that we're, you know, I, I made a poll that we are living in the worst timeline, but regardless of what you say, yeah, it could be worse, but it doesn't mean this is not bad. Like this society, and then we have all this other shit happening around us. This is some bullshit. This is some real bullshit. But I want to know your thoughts, guys. What do you think is going to happen in all of this? Do you agree this is only the beginning? More heads are going to roll. Let me know your thoughts. We'll talk about it in the comments. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA men walking away and cheers.